Hello and welcome to my shop. Today I have a tale of two chucks, the Vicmark VM100 and a clone of it, the Bulldog 375. I started out with the Bulldog and I've had this for about a year. And I've built up a small collection of jaws for it, both from Bulldog and from Vicmark. And I decided to get a second chuck body just to cut down on jaw changes. And with that decision, I went with the original recipe. So the most important question I can answer for you guys is, are the jaws interchangeable? And yes, they are. Any of the Bulldog jaws work fine to Vicmark and vice versa. And furthermore, the chuck key is the same, an 8mm mil, eight millimeter hex wrench between the two, so it really is like having two of the same chuck. But there are some minor differences, so let's zoom in and take a look at those. Zooming in, we can see that the two checks are pretty much identical. Uh, and eventually, indeed, they are. They're both 96 millimeters in diameter, and with their spindle adapters removed, both weigh about 1.5 kilograms. Uh, visually, the only difference is that the, the bull mar Bulldog actually has the jaw number stamped on the, the outside face of the body, which is nice for when doing jaw changes. As you can see, the Vic Mark doesn't have those, so I've instead written them in in Sharpie. Um, let's see, the biggest difference is if you look at how they grip onto their respective woodworm screws. The insides of the backing jaws and the Vicmark have a rounded inside face. Let them grip onto the round body of the screw. Whereas on the, the Bulldog, they come to a point. Um, when they're both clenched down on their screws, both grip equally well. So I don't, I don't see an immediate difference there. And I actually don't use uh, woodworm screws with my when I do wet bowls, so I really can't comment on, on how well they grip. Another difference, again, with the backing jaws is with the uh, safety set pins on the, the Vicmark. It's, it's a roller pin inserted into the hole, and on the Bulldog, it's a little set screw. And there's actually a further difference with how they machine the fore jaw on each one. So on a scroll chuck, the, the fore, jaw, fore jaw is a little bit special in that it has a slot milled on the underside to go around that safety pin. And the Vicmark will demonstrate how that works. So as I, I roll it out, you'll see the fore jaw go over that set pin. And there's a groove milled, oh, maybe three eighths of an inch in the bottom of that fore jaw. And I just hit the end of that groove. So this is how far you can extend the, the jaws on the Vicmark, um, thanks to the slot milled on the underside of the fore jaw. And that same slot on the Bulldog isn't milled in quite as far. So again, um, the slot in the fore jaw goes over that little set screw, but there you go, that's it. But it's just not, not milled in as far. So let's see how to best demonstrate this. So if you compare the where this, this slot is on the backing jaw, it ex extends past this line here on the chuck body. And on the bulldog, um, this inner, inner edge of the groove is within this line. So you don't get quite as much jaw travel on the bulldog. So if you flip the chucks over and look at the fore jaw, you can see how they, they the threads are, are cut a little bit differently on each one. They didn't do an exact clone of the Bulldog on here. So I, I won't be able, be able to eloquently explain the difference there, but <laughs> you, can see, you can see how they're just simply made differently, thus letting the Vic Mark come out a little bit more. Let's see, while I'm talking about the backing jaws, let me demonstrate how they both grip onto their woodworm screws. So I've tightened the jaws just until they've touched the woodworm screw. And the screw is held firm. So that tells me that the jaws are all moving in unison and they, they touch the woodworm screw equally when they came in. Different story on the Bulldog. So I've tightened it just until I've hit some resistance. And yep, there it is. So on, on the Bulldog, the jaws don't quite travel in perfect unison. 
whenever I've uh, tried tightening this wood, screw, wood room screw in, it always, let's see, it's gripped first by the 3-1 pair uh, before it's grabbed by the 4-2 pair. So it always wobbles in this direction, but not this direction. And I don't think this is actually a big deal um, because you're going to reef down on, on each individual key location, at which point you overcome that slop and the screw is held firm. But that just demonstrates how the machining tolerances on the internals of the Bulldog Chuck aren't quite as good. I'll spend a brief minute on the spindle adapters. You can see how the Vic Marks is a lot more substantial than the Bulldogs. It's heavier, uh, it's thicker, and it's also a little bit longer. Um, the only, only practical difference I've seen is that the, the Tommy Bar hole on the Vic Mark adapter is deeper. So the, the Tommy Bar sits in there a little more rigidly. And because there's just less material on this Bulldog adapter, the Tommy Bar flops around that hole a little bit. Another appreciable difference between the two is that the Vic Mark adapter locks onto the chuck body via this little set screw. The Bulldog doesn't have that feature, but again, in a year of using this thing, I've never once had the spindle adapter come loose from the chuck, even after popping the whole chuck off the lathe uh, using the chuck key. So they saved a little bit of money on that, but it might not actually make a difference. The last difference I'll show you is how well the scroll plate fits within the chuck body. Now the scroll plate is the large disc with a spiral thread cut into it that the backing jaws travel on when you turn the scroll plate. And the Bulldog has a noticeable gap between the, the chuck body and the scroll plate which lets in dust. So let's pop off the backing plates to better show you that. So looking into the, the body cavity of the Bulldog, you can see how on, in each quadrant of the chuck, it's, there's some dust sticking to the inside wall here, here, and, and down, down in here. Um, and if we, if we look closely, you can see daylight right on the, between the edge of the inside body of the chuck and the edge of the scroll. So you can easily see how that would let in some dust. Uh, comparing that to the Vic Mark, the scroll, the scroll is much, much closer to the edge of the chuck body. So you can see how that moves and there's no, no visible daylight coming through. So that's really probably not a huge deal. I mean, one way still sells chucks that don't even have a backing plate and they're just gonna get full of dust and junk. But um, it just goes, to, this is one of those places where the, the clone, clone chuck just isn't quite a perfect replica of the original and why the original is just a little bit better. And also while I have the, the backing plates open, um, you can see how Vicmark actually spent the nickel or whatever on greasing up their scroll before they shipped it. Now, granted, it's just that uh, the green green automotive grease that you can get at, at the auto parts store, but the Bulldog chuck is completely completely dry inside. Um, I, there might have been some light machine oil inside there, but it didn't get any, get it any love in that respect. So if you ask me which of these two chucks you should buy, I would say that you should buy the one that makes you feel better. The, the Vic Mark is about $40 more than the Bulldog. And they both hold on to wood equally well, even with that slight draw, jaw travel issue I pointed out earlier on the Bulldog. Once you grip it onto your workpiece, that, that uh, mistolerance falls around the equation. So basically, do you want to support the original manufacturer or do you want to save a few bucks and maybe have more budget for another set of chuck jaws? It's up to you. I don't feel that there's any difference in practice between the two products.